All right, today we're gonna to talk about how to burn off belly fat as fast as possible. And this video is for beginners. And I'm gonna show you the basics of how to do it, but there's some very important details that you need to know. There's actually five vital and practical tips that you don't really find in books. And I've discovered these just with experience, working with so many people for so many years. So I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna make it very, very simple because so many people get overwhelmed with all these details of how to do keto. It's overcomplicated. And then some people just kind of give up. So let me just show you the five most important things to focus on. So you can be very, very successful uh, right from the beginning and not end up where a lot of people end up where they get this uh, plateau and they just can't seem to um, get past a certain point. So it's always very, very important to learn from other people's mistakes. So you don't have to make them. And in this video, I just want you to get the very important things. You're going to have other questions uh, for those questions and additional details. I have a million videos you can watch later, but at least let's get you started with the most important tips. Now, what is the goal of getting on the ketogenic plan? The goal is to bring your insulin levels as low as possible. That is the goal. If your insulin levels are low, you have a maximum fat burning, you have a maximum ketosis. Ketosis is a state of producing ketones. Ketones are the byproduct of fat burning. And so the more ketones you generate, the more fat you're going to burn and the faster you're gonna lose your midsection. Now at the very top level of keto, uh, we have these macros, we have carbohydrates and you wanna keep your carbs between, people say between 30 and 50 grams, but I'm gonna tell you keep them below 20 grams or less, especially if you wanna speed things up. And then we have protein. We wanna keep that between three to six ounces of protein per meal, but that varies depending on your size and your metabolism and your age and how many meals you're consuming. If you're just doing OMAD one meal a day, Obviously, you're going to be doing more protein. If you're a bodybuilder, if you're exercising a lot, you're going to need a little bit more. But for the average person, um, just consume the amount of protein per meal, the size of the palm of your hand. Okay, that's it. I just want to keep it really, really simple. Now, as far as fat goes, you're going to be consuming 75% of your calories of fat. Now, what does that mean? 75% of your calories? How much is that in grams or ounces? So for this video, I'm not gonna get into the complexities of measuring different grams to get your macros. So when I explain the tips, you'll understand how much fat you'll need. All right, tip number one, instead of counting your grams of carbs, um, it's gonna be much easier to consume certain carbs that you don't have to count, okay? And I'm talking about leafy green vegetables, salads. Because this is mostly fiber and the insulin response is almost zero, because fiber is the only carbohydrate that does not affect insulin. So when we're talking about salad, we don't have to be counting carbohydrates. In fact, I want you to consume a larger amount of salad. I want you to consume at least seven cups of salad per day. It's not hard to do that. And one little tip on this point with salad to make it easier to consume is we use a salad cutter. So we actually cut the salad down. So we have this bowl of salad and then we cut it down and it just makes it even smaller and it's easier to consume. So instead of trying to be overwhelmed with all these carbs, just use vegetable carbohydrates, okay? Like salad and don't even worry about counting your carbs. And you could put other things on it as well, like feta cheese, definitely put the olive oil or vinaigrette and just make sure your salad dressing has like, I don't know, one or less carbs, okay? There are so many salad dressings that are out now that are virtually carb-free, but there's so many other salad dressings that are just loaded with sugar and that could be a hidden problem. Now, why do we want to consume all this salad? Well, keto is all about being low carb, right? Keto doesn't emphasize adding more nutrients. The type of keto that I always recommend is the healthy version of ketosis. So we're not only reducing insulin, we're enhancing nutrients so you can actually be healthier at the end of the day. There's huge benefits of lowering your carb, but there's also huge benefits of having nutrient dense foods. And the thing that salad has is it has a lot of potassium. It has a lot of magnesium and it has a lot of vitamin C. In addition to other vitamins like vitamin K1 and folic acid, and it has a lot of phytonutrients, which are those things that go way beyond just the normal vitamins and minerals and trace minerals. But consuming this large amount of salad on a keto plan will give you these nutrients to prevent keto cramps in your calves. It can help prevent keto fatigue, keto flu, and it'll improve a condition called insulin resistance. So it'll help lower insulin even more, and it'll even give you energy. Now, as a side note, additional tip, I always recommend to do your salad first. If you do your salad first, you'll definitely not overeat your protein. If you eat your protein first and then your salad, I find a lot of people can't seem to consume that much salad after they eat the protein. 
Now, if you're having a hard time with doing that much salad, do what you can, and you can also enhance things with a good electrolyte powder. Now, I'm not biased of my own electrolyte powder, but I will say that it is the highest quality electrolyte on the market. So the tip number one is consume the salad at the beginning part of your meal. All right, number two, protein. There's a couple practical things about protein you need to know. Um, first of all, maybe you wanna start with the protein the size of the palm of your hand. Um, and if you're a bigger person or a younger person, have more. And if you're a older person with a slower metabolism, have a little bit less. If you have too much protein, then you're gonna find that you're gonna feel sluggish and that can slow down your ketosis as well. Now, the same goes with not enough protein. You can feel too tired because your body needs a certain amount of protein. Now, the key with protein is don't do low fat protein. Find a protein that has the most fat. Fat normally comes with protein. And so if you're gonna do a hamburger, which I actually eat a lot of hamburger, get the fattiest hamburger. If you're gonna do fish, don't get the leanest fish, do the salmon or even sardines. Both of them are high in fat and that's gonna be much better than the lean protein. If you're gonna do chicken, don't just do the skinless chicken breasts, do the parts of the chicken that have the skin and the fat. Now, why is that? Because when you consume lean protein, you stimulate insulin a little bit more than if it was fattier protein. In fact, the thing that stimulates insulin at a very high level is whey protein because there's hardly any fat in whey. And that's the type of protein that I would not recommend. But the point is try to get protein that comes with more fat. Pork has a lot more fat than other types of meat. If you do steak, try to eat the fat that normally comes with the steak. All right, that's tip number two. Now, tip number three is about fat. Now, if you're new to keto and you're just starting out, it's very important to increase the amount of fat at each meal. So that could be consuming more nuts. I like pecans, but you can do other types of nuts as well. You can do macadamia nuts. You have olives, avocado. You have more olive oil on your salad. You have MCT oil. But the question is, if you're eating all this fat, is that gonna slow down weight loss? And the answer is yes, because the initial goal of the ketogenic plan is not necessarily to jump right into weight loss. It is to do this, and this is very, very important. So if you've checked out, just check back in right now and really pay attention to this next thing I'm gonna tell you. It is very, very important to also do intermittent fasting with healthy keto. Now, why? Well, if you were to check your ketones, your blood ketones, and the scale goes up from zero all the way up to like seven, it can go a little bit higher, but roughly there's a scale, right? If you do just keto without intermittent fasting, chances are you're not gonna get above one, two, maybe three, okay? Your level of ketones. The higher, the more ketosis, the deeper fat burning you're gonna be in, and the lower in the scale, the less you're gonna be into ketosis. So if you wanted to get your numbers like four, five, maybe six, you need to add intermittent fasting and potentially even exercise, but we're not gonna talk about exercise right now. We just wanna talk about intermittent fasting. So the combination of low carb and intermittent fasting together is really powerful if you want fast results getting rid of your belly fat. And to do that very easily, we don't want you to have an appetite. We don't want you to be hungry all the time. We don't want you to have cravings. So the first strategy or tip to do this is to add more fat to the meal so you can go longer without eating. So you can start your intermittent fasting pattern. So the first goal is not to eat breakfast, okay? To go as long as possible. And then have your first meal about 12 and your second meal at six. And then over time, you'll squish these two meals closer and closer and closer. And for some people, you're just gonna like eliminate the lunch altogether and just do the dinner. So you're doing one meal a day, which is called OMAD. Now, when you eat this fat at the meal, you're gonna be very satisfied, okay? And within two to three days, you're not gonna be hungry at all. You're gonna lose your appetite. Why? Because you're able to fast longer and you're gonna be more into ketosis. So in other words, your body is gonna start burning your own fat, which is a new concept for a lot of people. But here is the next point. Don't eat if you're not hungry. So many people screw this up because they're doing this robotic. They're told this is how many meals that you need to have per day and they're doing low carb, but they're not losing weight and they're eating when they're not even hungry. Huge mistake. If you're not hungry, don't eat. Why would you want to screw up your fat burning? I mean, here you are, you finally lowered your carbs. Your body is tapping into your fat. It's getting rid of the fat on your liver and your midsection. And your appetite is gone because you are eating when you're not eating. And then you eat a meal. And now you're going to be hungry a little bit later because every time you eat, 
you pop yourself out of ketosis, regardless of what you eat, just because eating triggers insulin and high insulin blocks the state of ketosis. This is why we do intermittent fasting. And this is why this rule is so important. So as soon as you start getting into this adaptation where you're burning your own fat and your hunger goes away, the next meal, you start cutting down your fat, this MCT oil, the extra nuts. Why would we want to do this? Because, and this especially applies if you have a slow metabolism, if the body has a choice between dietary fat and its own fat, it's going to go after and burn the dietary fat before your own fat. And what we're trying to do is to get you to burn off your own belly fat. And so you don't want to go crazy with too much fat while you're in the middle of this plan. In the very beginning part of ketosis, you want to increase fat. And at the very end of this cycle, when you reach your goal, that's when we also want to increase your fat, but not in the middle of this program where you're just in fat burning and you've lost your appetite. You're not craving. Everything's going great. You don't have to add a lot of fat. You just want to have the fat that normally comes with the protein. Now you definitely don't want to go low fat, but just don't start adding all this additional fat unless you have a high metabolism. When you're doing intermittent fasting, when you're doing ketosis, it's very important to include all the nutrients that you need to prevent nutritional deficiencies because you're no longer going to be doing three meals and snacks. And so if you're going to do two meals or one meal, it's a little more difficult to get your nutrients. And the fact that you're in ketosis means that you're going to be burning up different nutrients. The requirements of certain nutrients are going to be higher than they were before. So you're going to need more B vitamins, more electrolytes. One of the good sources of the B vitamins is nutritional yeast. And I'm not telling you, you need to consume my nutritional yeast. You can do any type of nutritional yeast. Just make sure it's not fortified with synthetic vitamins, but the B vitamins are very, very important. Uh, electrolytes are very important and sea salt is very, very important. If you're not consuming extra sea salt, what's going to happen is you're going to feel weak. Make mental note of that and start adding more sea salt to your diet. Now, if you're consuming a large salad at that meal, um, the need for electrolytes will not be as great because you're going to be getting potassium and magnesium and other minerals as well. All right. Number five, we want to make this a lifestyle change. We want this to be enjoyable. The fact that your cognitive function is going to improve, your energy is going to improve, your mood is going to improve, and your belly is going to shrink is all going to make you happier. You're going to feel better, but a lot of people miss all these kind of uh, pleasure foods. And so there's a couple things that um, I include after a meal that you might want to also include. And one is a low carb chocolate. You can do Lily's chocolate. There's a lot of other chocolate products that you can consume that have low carb. And, but I tend to do a little chocolate after my first meal, not a whole bar. I might have a half a bar and it's actually quite pleasurable. The other thing you can do, not every meal, but maybe a few times a week is to make some really cool uh, keto desserts and have one of those at the end of the meal. It's very, very pleasurable, very enjoyable. And I will put a link down below of those recipes. And that way you can look forward to having some healthy version at a dessert. So at this point, if you do these basic things, these five things, you're going to notice some considerable results, but you're going to still have questions. And I have a lot of videos on the questions that you have, but I don't want you to get overwhelmed with all these details and lost in the woods. I want you to keep it really, really simple and just jump in without having to learn an entire book of details. In fact, I just recommend that you start right now while it's fresh in your mind. And so if questions come up, just do a search. I have a video for every single question you have, but there's two more things I want to mention. If something is working, don't change anything. So many people go along and they're getting great results and then they change something. Why did you change something? It was working. Just keep going. But on the flip side, if something's not working, then you need to change something. And for that information, I have a lot of videos on plateau and I'll put some links down below. You can save those and then watch them when you need them. And the last point and probably the most important point is this concept of you don't lose weight to get healthy. You have to get healthy to lose weight. It's get healthy first, then the weight loss comes. And that's what we're trying to focus on the healthy version of ketosis. So to get healthy and keep this really, really simple, I created a very short playlist of step one, two, and three that I want you to watch right now. Check it out, get started immediately and send me your success story.